Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera. Kalau dalam kelas, awak reply perlahan, saya akan ulang balik. Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera. Ya, yeah, Renu nak bercakap dalam kelas. For today's class, I would like to remind you that we are at week 5. So, when we're talking about week 5, we are focusing on consumer-driven marketing strategy which include segmentation, targeting, differentiation, positioning. But before we go further, I would like to revisit whatever that we have learned before. For first week, we have learned about definition of marketing as well as marketing orientations. For second week, we have learned about strategic planning. And there are four steps in strategic planning bermula dengan goal dan berakhir dengan marketing or other functional strategies. For third week, we have learned about environment. So inside environment, we need to understand about micro environment and macro environment. Micro, kecil, keliling organisasi. Suppliers, competitors, intermediaries, companies and other entities which affect how company serves its customers. So, yang kedua, macro environment, macro, besar, kuasa, forces. So, these forces include cultural, political, um, technological and other forces which can influence how the company acts in the market. For fourth week, we have learned about customer market and business market. So we can see the difference between consumer market and business market. Consumer market, they try to serve the consumer who buy product or service for personal consumption. Business market, consent with the organizations who buy product or services in order to produce something so that they can sell it to the other party. So, bila berbeza ni benda ini, mereka juga punya model yang berbeza. Mereka ada faktis yang mempengaruhi consumer market, mempengaruhi business market. Ada juga decision process. Cuma untuk consumer market, kita boleh melihat buying behavior of consumer. Ada dissonance, ada complex, ada habitual uh, dan lagi satu saya tak ingat, saya akan recall balik. Okay? So, uh, now I would like to focus on consumer driven marketing strategy. Di mana I'm going to explain about segmentation and targeting at the first place and then I'm going to explain about differentiation and positioning. For segmentation, I would like to clarify that there are three markets that I use in order to explain about segmentation. So, these three markets include apa? Pertama, consumer market. Kedua, business market. Ketiga, international market. So, ketiga-tiga market ini, saya nak menerangkan bahawa terdapat cara yang kita gunakan untuk kita segment consumer in consumer market. Terdapat juga cara tersendiri untuk kita segment consumer in business market. Dan kita juga ada cara kita tersendiri untuk kita segment consumer in international market. Si sebab tu saya kata ada tiga market dan ketiga-tiga market tu ada cara mereka yang tersendiri untuk melakukan segmentation. Tapi kena faham dulu what is segmentation? Segmentation adalah proses Big market is being divided into smaller market. Jadi, bila kita nak divide market, there must be certain criteria that we follow. 
for example, I want to segment based on state. So, kalau sebelum ni satu dunia, tapi when I decided to go for state, negeri. So, kita ada berapa? Melaka, Negeri Sembilan, Kelantan, Terengganu. So, there are many states in Malaysia. Okay? So, uh, itu adalah berkaitan dengan segmentation secara general. So, bila saya berkata tentang targeting, target market. So, before we decide for our target market, we do segmentation. And why we do segmentation? Because we need to remember different groups will require different needs and wants. Jadi, benda tu lah kita nak tengok. Yang mana satu yang kita nak pilih untuk menjadi target market. But before kita nak pilih target market, kita buat group dulu. Okay? Jadi, sebentar lagi kita akan tengok satu-satu. How do you want to segment consumer based on consumer market? How do you want to segment consumer based on business market? How do you want to segment consumer based on international market? So, yang pertama kita tengok berdasarkan consumer market. Saya gerak sekejap, eh. Mana consumer market? Okay. So, consumer market terbahagi, I mean, segmentation of consumer market terbahagi kepada empat. Geographic segmentation, demographic segmentation, psychographic segmentation, behavioral segmentation. When it comes to geographic segmentation, remember geographic tempat. So, contoh yang saya boleh bagi, negara, negeri, bandar uh, dan juga uh, kejiranan yang awak tengah duduk sekarang. Bila when it comes to demographic segmentation, I always... Um, I always give this kind of example in class when it relates to demographic. Demographic adalah characteristic of people. So, when you want to characterize people, you characterize based on what perspective. So, kalau saya, saya nak characterize orang berdasarkan daripada umur mereka. Kerana different level of age will show different level, different kind of interest. So, demographic segmentation sekali lagi saya ulang adalah berkaitan dengan characteristic of people. So, characteristic sebagai contoh income, age, occupation, apa lagi ada? Uh, religion, ethnicity. So, these are all demographic uh, variables that you can use to segment consumer market. Number three, psychographic segmentation. So, psychographic segmentation relates to, contoh, life, lifestyle, social status. Okay, so these are the ways that can be used by the organization if they want to do psychographic segmentation. So, bila kita ambil lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. Saya selalu bagi dalam kelas healthy lifestyle. Okay. They, uh, and probably some of you have luxury uh, kind of uh, living style. So definitely the way you act, the way you behave, the way you do something will be different as compared to those without that kind of lifestyle. Okay, jadi itu yang kita nak, nak yang saya yang saya nak awak nampak psychographic adalah berkaitan dengan social status lifestyle and as well as personality. Okay, saya terlupa satu personality juga dalam psychography. Yang terakhir ialah behavioral segmentation. So, bila saya kata behavioral segmentation, yang ni saya nak bagi tunjuk. Sebab tadi saya tak tunjuk sangat kan? Sebab saya rasa it's easy for you to understand. But this one, uh, behavioral segmentation Divide the market into segment based on consumer knowledge, attitude, uses of a product, responses to a product. Behavioral, behavior. 
how do you behave towards something okay so the basis for behavior segmentation can also include occasions benefit so user status usage rate loyalty status for occasions i would like to give example uh, for occasions which is festive season so di malaysia ada banyak festive seasons yang ada kita ada hari raya uh, kita pun tak tahu kita boleh hari raya ke tak untuk tahun ni okey hari raya juga hari raya uh, Aidil Fitri, Aidil Adha, Christmas, uh, Tahun Baru Cina, Difa Bali. So, different occasions will um, have different will have different kind of behavior that occur inside the individual. Okay. Yang kedua, benefit so. Example yang saya boleh bagi ialah penggunaan ubat gigi. Kalau saya, saya beli ubat gigi, benefit yang saya nak ialah saya nak kan gigi yang putih seperti Fazura. Ha, itu benefit yang saya nak. Saya nak, bukan awak nak, suka hati awak lah, awak nak apa. Okay. Ada orang, dia nak, dia nak kan benefit, okay, apabila menggunakan ubat gigi, dia tak rasa sakit sebab dia adalah orang yang punya gigi yang sensitif. Jadi, kalau boleh, dia nak kan ubat gigi yang boleh bagi that kind of benefit. So, I just would like to exemplify that. Different people may have different expected benefit. Jadi, benda ni jugalah. Base yang awak boleh gunakan. Okay, for example, uh, orang yang nak benefit satu, benefit dua, benefit tiga, benefit empat. So, you try to segment and you can see that different group based on the benefit that they expected. User status, new user, non-user, orang yang tak pernah guna mestilah berbeza dengan orang yang baru guna dan orang yang telah lama guna. Active user, usage rate. Apabila kita gunakan produk pencuci muka, some of you tiap-tiap hari awak pakai. Some of you seminggu sekali. Some of you macam saya kata pakai sabun, terpulang. Because we have different usage rate. So, you can segment based on usage rate. Yang terakhir, loyalty status. So, this one, we can see that some of you yang kita pernah belajar lagi dalam piramid. Ha. Piramid, uh, user piramid tu, okay, ada platinum, ada lead. Okay, dekat situ ada yang memang betul-betul very loyal. So, when they are very loyal, whatever new product is coming, they do, they are not reluctant to buy it because they are loyal to that brand. Okay, jadi, these are the basis for behavioral segmentation that you can use. Cuma saya nak awak faham, tidak semestinya, okay, you have to choose all four segmentation in order for you to segment your consumer market. Jadi, bila awak tengok dekat sini, okay, some of the organization, they use multiple segmentation because they want to find smaller, better defined target group. So, that's why they pilih sebagai contoh demographic dan juga geographic. They pilih state dan juga income. Sebab dia nak makin better defined. Dia nak makin specific. Kalau awak cuma pilih geografik, ianya hanyalah berdasarkan kepada tempat. Tapi kalau awak pilih geografik dan juga demografik, awak telah pilih tempat dan juga characteristic of an individual or in a group. Jadi benda tu lebih specific. Jadi awak lebih memahami apa yang sebenarnya konsumen awak mahu. Okay. Tapi saya ulang sekali lagi statement yang saya tahu sebelum ni. Tidak semestinya bila awak nak segment consumer market, awak perlu pilih geografik, demografik, psikografik, behavioral. Semua tu awak nak pilih. Satu awak rangkumkan semata-mata nak lebih spesifik. Tak perlu. Because when you want to do segmentation, it actually depends on your resources. Yang mana satu sebenarnya yang awak rasa awak nak segment. 
Yang mana satu sebenarnya awak nak jadikan target market Because uh, if I want to open up a business uh, I would like to serve those people within my resources Bila saya kata resources, capital saya, services saya Saya mahu ianya bertepatan dengan apa yang saya cuba serve Okay Um, okay. Seperti yang saya bagi tahu Pada permulaan In order for me to explain about segmentation Kita ada tiga market Pertama consumer market Kedua business market Ketiga international market uh, I think it's vital for me to explain that You can use the segmentation The way you segment consumer market Oh business market Jadi maksudnya kalau awak guna segmentation untuk consumer market Sebenarnya boleh juga guna untuk business market Cuma untuk business market There are additional variables that you can use Additional variable tu kalau Kalau uh, kalau kata satu organisasi Bila untuk business market Dia buat geografik Dia juga buat demografik Dia juga buat uh, psychographic Dia juga buat behavioral sama kan? Empat sama dengan consumer market. However, when it come to business market, bukan setakat empat ni saja, Bukan setakat empat yang sama dengan consumer market tadi. Dia juga boleh menambah segmentation based on ha, ni. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. Ha, ni. Saya terpaksa mengalihkan diri saya ke sini supaya awak nampak customer operating characteristic, purchasing approaches, situational factors, personal characteristic. Okay, because you need to understand Business market, saya ulang sekali lagi Kalau ada orang yang tak ingat Business market ialah uh, Concern dengan organisation Who buy product or services In order to produce product or services Dia bukan berdasarkan personal consumption Seperti consumer market Jadi siapa yang beli barang? Organisasi yang beli barang tapi bukanlah organisasi beli barang. Orang di dalam organisasi itu membeli barang. Nah, bila kita ambil satu, purchasing approaches. Okay, when organization buy something, sometimes they use agent. Sometimes they personally buy the product because uh, they would like, uh, because they already have the suppliers. Okay, but some of them use the agents because they would like to have cheaper price. So, Different company, they may have different kind of approaches when they want to do purchasing. So, sebab tu saya kata, untuk business market, okay, they, uh, I mean, the organization can use demographic, geographic, behavioral, psychographic, untuk segment business market Boleh tak ada masalah Kau semua market guna benda empat ni Business market pun boleh juga guna empat ni Tetapi Mereka juga Di dalam business market Bila awak nak segment business market Boleh menggunakan Customer operating characteristic Purchasing approaches Situational factors Dan juga personal characteristic Because The one who buy Bukan Bukan syarikat tu bangunan tu yang beli Orang dalam bangunan tu yang beli Orang dalam syarikat tu yang beli kan Okay So the expertise The, the sale personnel Who buy the product Also can be used as the Basis for segmenting business market Yang seterusnya International market So macam mana kita nak segment international market Yang ini kena faham International market bermaksud Awak di Malaysia, awak nak jual barang ke Indonesia. Awak di Malaysia nak jual barang ke European countries. When you want to sell your product to foreign countries. Of course, when you want to go outside, there are certain things that you need to consider. So, kita pergi sebelah. Saya turunkan diri saya balik. Alamak, mana ni? Sekejap, ya. Tak nak turun pula dia. Sekejap. Okey. Tepul pula. 
Okay, so these are the ways that you can that you can um, use in order for you to submit the international market. Sekejap saya ambil nota. Saya takut ada yang saya tertinggal. Bukan ni. Okay, this one. Okay, bila kita cakap pasal geographic region. And you need to remember, okay, different region, uh, bila uh, European countries, okay, awak, awak, awak kena remember the Brexit and the UK is not part of European countries anymore and you know that, uh, apa, uh, those Asia Tenggara punya negara, because why you need to know about this? Because kita ada tax yang kita kena bayar. So, bila ada tax, you need to really understand the geographic location first. Okay, di mana kita, di mana consumer, potential consumer kita berada. Economy factors, okay, it refers to this one, population income level. Developing countries, what is the income level that they have? Developed countries, what are the income level that they have? Because this is very important because you want to sell product. When you want to sell product, you need to know the purchasing power that they have. You need to know what what the needs and wants of the consumer in that particular country. And the needs and wants normally depends on income that they have. So these are the things that you need to really look into. Political and legal factors. Uh, the amount of bureaucracy in each of the country also can be considered. Okay? Sebab bureaucracy ni penting uh, untuk awak tahu macam mana uh, adakah proses dia mengambil masa yang lama. Because some of the country, they have a very good uh, procedure. So, you do not have to wait. Okay? So, that's why when you want to do segmentation, do you want to go for countries with high bureaucracy um uh, uh, bureaucracy punya issue or you want to ha- you want to go for countries with low bureaucracy issues so these are the things that you need to consider and bila kita cakap pasal political stability of the government so do you want to go for uh, the countries with a uh, low stability of government or do you want to go for high stability of government bila government to stable dia ada better rules and regulation. Okay, so dia, these are the things that these are the things that you can take and do segmentation in order for you to really know your international market. Bila kita tengok pasal cultural factors, culture tu sendiri, it reflects language, it reflects value, it reflects um beliefs it reflects apa lagi di dalam tu ya saya takut dia saya tertinggal attitudes so if you want to use cultural factors okay some of the some of the companies they when they try to submit base of cultural factors so you can see that uh, they probably go for the Malay speaking uh, Malay speaking countries or probably they want to go to Chinese speaking countries because they believe that they are more they have more uh, experience to handle those Malay speaking can, uh, country countries consumers or they believe that they have more experience to handle the Chinese speaking countries consumer so tu kita kena buat dulu segmentation sebab kita nak tengok yang mana satu sebenarnya kita nak serve and you need to know what are the needs and wants of each of the segment that you have selected. Okay? So, saya rasa dah habis dah segmentation tadi. Nak beritahunya pada awak, you need to understand the definition of segmentation. When you divide the market into smaller market. And when you want to divide the market into smaller market, there must be certain criteria that you use in order for you to divide into certain group. Macam awak lah kalau awak nak masuk group pun, 
Kau mesti akan pilih group tu berdasarkan apa Awak masuk group tu berdasarkan interest awak Oh mungkin awak masuk group tu sebab berdasarkan kepada Awak punya uh, Expertise Oh maybe awak masuk group tu berdasarkan kepada apa Berdasarkan kepada um, Mungkin negeri Oh mungkin negara awak oh, There are many, many criteria that you can use When you want to divide into smaller group Cuma Okay Uh, when you want to do segmentation, you can do segmentation for consumer market. You can also do segmentation for business market. You can also do segmentation for international market. Itu yang saya nak awak faham. Yang pertama. Yang kedua, um, targeting. So, kita pergi depan balik. Saya pergi depan. Bukan bukan nak, bukan nak tunjuk apa, cuma nak tunjuk. Definition of targeting Here yeah. Select the segment Or segments to enter So this is where Okay You select Which of the customer That you want to serve So if you think that You want to sell Women product So that is the target market That you have selected If you think that Sebab mula-mula awak kata Awak nak pilih demographic Segmentation Demographic, segmentation, gender Gender ada Men and women Kalau tambah lagi satu terpulang lah Okay sekarang ni saya fokus men dengan women Jadi Yang awak nak select yang mana Ada juga dia kata dia nak select Dua-dua because They want to they want to Sell the product to women and they also want to sell, uh, They also want to sell to Women, eh sorry, to men So Itulah targeting Um, cuma Strategi yang kita perlu gunakan Untuk targeting adalah Ini Okay this one Undifferentiated Differentiated Concentrated Micro marketing So untuk Undifferentiated Ada kat sini Kita ada Whole market One offer Whole market One offer Apa maksud whole market One offer They want to serve The whole market And by Offering just one offer So There are many There are many companies Okay Before this They Do not have their, They do not have Their kita panggil mass marketing lah sebenarnya kita. Okay. The, when it when when it comes to mass. Mass maksudnya menyeluruh besar. Okay. Dia tak ada siapa-siapa yang dia submit. Tak ada target market. Dia jual pada semua orang. Dia aim dia adalah untuk menjual kepada seluruh market yang ada. Yang kedua. Differentiated segmented marketing. So we have different market. Different offer. So if you if you have a market for young adult you have market for children okey cuba awak tengok dekat MACD untuk children kita ada happy meal untuk a uh, young adult pun kita ada juga kita punya apa set menu yang disediakan so different different market have different offer untuk women ada dia punya produk dia untuk men ada produk dia concentrated niche market ha this one large of a smaller market apa kita masukkan dengan large of a smaller market maksudnya okey baju ada banyak baju tau baju ada memang ada banyak baju okey uh, bila kita kata women Awak ada baju kurung, awak ada baju kebaya, awak ada baju skirt, awak ada baju kelawar. Tapi, dia pilih, dia nak jual baju kelawar saja. Niche. Dia limited, very limited. Kenapa dia pilih macam tu? Why they only focus on one offer? Uh, not, not one offer, they only focus on niche market because of the resources that they have. Jadi, sebab resource dia limited, so apa dia buat? Dia cuma fokus kepada niche. Sesuatu yang very limited. Instead of go for all the women apparel, maksudnya 
Dan instead of nak jual semua baju wanita Dia hanya fokus kepada satu saja Iaitu baju kelawar ha, Okay Tak baju kelawar pun fokus kepada satu saja Baju Baju apa saya suka Baju jubah lah Okay Hanya jubah saja dia jual Niche Niche Market Yang terakhir kita ada Mikro marketing So mikro marketing Saya boleh bagi satu contoh Okay Coffee Yang dijual dekat uh, Dekat mana ya uh, M&M Dekat M&M uh, Dia nak uh, Dia jual coffee Buat stuff uh, Dia uh, Apa Apa yang dia buat ialah Dekat Dekat dia punya Coklat tu tadi Dia ada gambar Gambar orang yang order So Bukan setakat itu saja Kalau dalam Coffee Ataupun coklat Okay sekejap eh Tak ada Saya tak tahu lah Awak dengar ke tak Tapi saya dengar Anak saya tengah buka Dia punya uh, Apa Youtube dia Youtube for kids lah ha. Saya rasa awak tak dengar kot Okay jadi saya boleh teruskan lah Okay So untuk micro marketing uh, Contoh Saya kata tadi coffee ya Coffee tu tadi Ada gambar awak Gambar awak Ataupun tulisan nama awak Because They want to tailor To the needs And wants Of Individual Ah, ha, Mungkin gambar awak Gambar kucing awak Gambar Gambar saya ke Kalau saya beli Gambar Siapa Ha, tak kisahlah siapa-siapa yang beli tu Gambar dia yang keluar Itu kita pakai micro marketing Jadi uh, I just want to tell you that Segmentation okay, They have their own strategy Yang tadi Untuk business market Untuk consumer market Untuk international market Dia ada dia punya strategi dia Untuk targeting juga Ada strategi tersendiri Di mana sama ada you want to focus the whole market Itu kita panggil mass marketing Semua awak nak cover Awak tak ada target pun sebenarnya Bukan tak ada target You you only one market, one offer The whole market, one offer Okay Oh, you want to go for differentiated segmented marketing So, di sini bermulalah Different segment Different offer Ataupun awak boleh buat Concentrated niche marketing Okay because you only would like to focus on Very limited Marketing eh, Sorry very limited uh, Target market Dan yang terakhir Micro marketing So this one They tailor To the individual Needs and wants So that's why Okay Uh, many of the organization they have considered micro marketing because they know that personalization is very important because uh, people want something which is special to them so it makes them become more loyal to the brand that they want to buy okay dan seterusnya kita akan pergi kepada second part okay, bila saya kata second part ialah kita ada um Differentiation and positioning For second part Differentiation and positioning The aim for this two Is to develop value proposition Kalau the aim for Segmentation and targeting Because they want to select The customer that they want to serve So bila dah select Oh settle lah ni Dah settle lah segmentation dengan targeting Dah settle But for differentiation and positioning, they want to develop value proposition. Jadi, bila saya cakap pasal develop value proposition, ni semua awak boleh baca lah. Okay, when they want to develop value proposition, um, differentiation and positioning adalah berdasarkan kepada satu, dua, tiga, empat strategi ini Saya ulang sekali lagi Untuk um, Differentiation and positioning strategy 
it depends on 1, 2, 3, 4. Dan perkataan yang paling penting akan keluar di sini ialah position, awak nampak kat situ position. Kedua, competitive advantage, awak nampak kat situ. Okay. Okay. So, dua di atas ni sebenarnya dia lebih berkaitan dengan differentiation. Dan dua di bawah ini adalah berkaitan dengan position ni. Okay. So, uh, it's very important for you to understand what is the definition of competitive advantage. The advantage that you have over your competitor. Okay. Saya baru teringat, saya perlu menunaikan solat. Saya... Saya pause kejap eh. <coughs> okay. Sorry. <coughs> so, saya letakkan Aisyah. So, saya letakkan diri saya di atas ni pula. <coughs> so, as I mentioned before. Differentiation and position. So, these are the strategies for differentiation and positioning. So, if you see the two points above, they are actually differentiation. And the two points below, they are positioning strategies. So, if you see here, when it comes to competitive advantage, you need to understand what is the definition of competitive advantage. Saya gerak. Advantage over competitors by offering consumer greater value either through lower prices or by providing more benefits that justify higher prices. Because some of the organization, they compete with the competitors by providing lower prices. Some of the competitors, uh, sorry, some of the organization, they compete with the competitors by offering more benefits to justify why they have higher prices as compared to the others. So, the competitive advantage is actually the strength of the company when they want to compete in the market. So, kita kena tahu what is the competitive advantage of our company. So, bila awak tengok kembali kepada strategies related to differentiation and positioning, so I want you to understand what is competitive advantage. Because this competitive advantage will help the organization to build a position in the market. Because, okay, uh, the position that you have in the market only can be established when you are able to be different as compared to the others. <coughs> Sorry. So, in order for you to be different, these are the aspects that you can try to look and try to uh, <coughs> and, and try to um, that try to work on in order for in order for you to be different. So, number one, product. So, if you want to be different, you need to make sure that you have a unique product. So, how can you have a unique product? By having a good research and development. So, <coughs> the research de and development... Okay, sekejap, ya. Mana pause ni? Okay, sorry. <coughs> so... If you want to have competitive advantage, you can be different based on your product by having a unique product. And in order for you to have a unique product, you need to have a good research and development initiative in the organization. And sometimes, some of the organization, if they are not able to develop their own research and development, they can also outsource the process of developing the product to the other companies. Itu yang kita panggil outsourcing. Okay? So, it's up to the creativity of the organization on how they can be different. So, if you want to be different based on the product, you need to have a unique product. Which the other, which the other, sorry. Okay. 
Uh, besides that, you can also gain competitive advantage by having differentiation towards your services. So, services can include after sale services that being provided to the customer. So, sebab itulah, some, some of the brands, walaupun mereka menawarkan harga yang tinggi, So, awak kena faham kenapa harga tinggi. Harga tinggi kerana servis yang tidak terdapat di tempat lain. And selalunya, kita panggil uh, full service yang diberikan oleh sesebuah syarikat atau sesebuah produk atau sesebuah brand, itu akan meningkatkan harga mereka. Tapi, it doesn't matter because okay, some of the customer They are looking for unique services or different services or personalized services from the company. So, that is also one of the way for the organization to gain competitive advantage. Yang ketiga, channels. Apa yang dimasukkan dengan channels? Channel adalah bagaimana company boleh berinteraksi berhubung, communicate, reach the customer. So, uh, some of the companies, they have physical store in order for the customer to reach them. But some of the companies, they doesn't, uh, some of the companies, they do not only have physical store, they also have online store in order for them to reach the customer. So, when you are able to provide multi-channels to the customer, so this definitely will encourage active engagement and interaction between company and customers. Okay, jadi untuk kita jadi berbeza, kita perlu ada platform yang kita wujudkan di antara kita which is the company dengan customer untuk merapatkan hubungan di antara mereka berdua. So channel can be supply chain channel, can be uh, can be um, can be many ways of channels that you can use whether it is online, whether it is physical store and in fact Okay, kita boleh tengok uh, se- dan ke- apa yang berlaku sekarang ni pada waktu PKP the only way, okay, not not the only way, okay, some of the companies, I, I can say that some of the companies the only way that they can reach the customer only through online channel. If they do not have or they do not know how to utilize the online channel, they definitely will not be able to survive during this PKP or MCO, Movement Control Order in Malaysia. Okay, so yang seterusnya people. So, bila saya cakap pasal people, people uh, people that I'm I'm trying to tell you here is the employees that they have, the expertise that they have. Apa yang membezakan satu syarikat dengan syarikat yang lain ialah kepakaran yang mereka ada. And uh, some of the companies, they really look into the customer service people that they have in the organization that interact with the customers. So, people is one of the capital that should be that should be retained by the organization. Bayangkan, awak train people, awak train awak punya employees, uh, beratus ringgit, beribu ringgit, and then they just go away, so it's just a waste of money. Okay, if you want to be different, you need to train your people, you need to have the, the best expertise in the organization, so that you can get competitive advantage. And the, yang terakhir, image. So, your image is also one of the way for you to gain competitive advantage. So, image is related to brand. Okay, so that's why you can see that some of the people, when they are very loyal to a brand, they are willing to buy any product from that particular brand. Saya boleh cakap, Uh, kebanyakannya dos uh, yang uh, 
uh, very very attached to brand normally dia dia tak kisah keluar berapa banyak sekalipun harga jadi itu yang kita mahukan because because the image itself when kalau awak tengok orang pakai BMW kalau awak tengok orang pakai Mercedes you know that they are coming from certain level of people jadi itu yang kita nak bila kita dapat upgrade the image of the company and people are looking forward for your brand that definitely will ensure that you already have the competitive advantage as compared to your competitors. Okay. Uh, dan habis dah. Saya ke depan lagi. Okay. Okay, this one. If before this, I'm talking about competitive advantage and how are you able to be, uh, how you are able to gain competitive advantage by being different and if you want to be different, you can be different because of your product, because of your image, because of your service. Di sini, saya nak bercakap tentang positioning. Okay? So, dalam positioning, kalau awak tengok balik dekat depan, okay, first you need to have Overall positioning strategy. Second, you need to communicate the position, the positioning strategy that you have to the market. Jadi, kalau awak ada positioning strategy tapi orang tak tahu pun tak guna. Sebab, you need to make sure that the customer knows uh, what is your positioning strategy. Okay, some of the company, they want people to see their product as luxury product. So, customer kena nampak lah memang Okay, if I buy this product, I will look rich. So, you need to make sure that the customer, the market knows where do you position your product at the market. So, kalau kita pergi balik dekat sini, okay. Um, saya turunkan balik diri saya. Mana? Okay, here. You see that benefits and price. Saya pernah bagi tahu tadi kat depan. If you want to have competitive advantage, some of the companies, they offer lower price uh, in order for them to gain competitive advantage as compared to the competitors. Ada yang menawarkan benefit yang lebih. Okay, jadi dalam positioning strategi ni juga, you can see that between benefit, price. So, bila awak tengok yang pertama, saya nak awak tengok pertama tu. More For more. Maksudnya, awak tawarkan more benefit in order for the customer to get more benefit, they need to pay more. Price kan? More kan? More benefit, more price. So, siapa yang company yang menggunakan strategi more benefit, more price? Sampai sanggup awak bayar RM3,000 lebih, RM4,000 lebih untuk satu handphone, Apple. Saya beritahu. Okay? Okay. Uh, besides that, the company that use uh, BMW. Um, sorry, sorry. Aduh, bila. Sorry, Mercedes. Okay. More for more. So, if you want to have more benefits, you need to pay more. So, yang kedua kita ada more for the same. More for same. So, Uh, you want to pay, you want to get more benefit, tapi you want to pay the same. You do not want to pay higher price. So, kalau awak tengok, saya nak bagi satu company, eh. uh, ada satu syarikat company ni, syarikat kereta, kita panggil uh, Toyota. Okay, dia keluarkan Lexus line ni, eh. sebab dia nak menunjukkan yang dia sama taraf juga dengan BMW. Okay. So, dia mengeluarkan satu model dia. Uh, benefit yang lebih banyak dan harga yang sama. Jadi, this particular company, they are trying to pursue this kind of strategy. Di mana you, the, uh, di mana customer, uh, dia sorry. Okay. Di mana customer uh, mendapat benefit yang lebih banyak tapi dalam harga yang sama. Okay. Toyota. 
uh, dia melakukan Toyota Lexus line they are giving they are using this kind of strategy in order for them to compete in the market Uh, saya tak nak tengok yang tepi tu Yang di mana more for less Sebab more for less tu adalah Yang terbaik sebenarnya The winning proposition okay, Jadi saya tengok belah bawah dulu Less for more less Less for more less Sorry, less for much less Company yang menggunakan Ialah Riot Air Jet Air Those companies that uh, If you want to If you want to pay less And you get less benefit Jadi sebab itulah Kalau awak tengok Kalau awak uh, Kena dua ringgit okay, Kita ambil Paling mudah sekali lah Kena dua ringgit um, Quality barang yang tidak bagus uh, Bukanlah tidak bagus Quality barang yang kurang Yang 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 lower Lower quality of product okay, But They are able To pay for lesser price Jadi Ryan Air uh, Jet Air These are low cost airlines Overseas From overseas They are using less for much less So they get less benefit The customer get less benefit However They can pay less They can pay much less Lagi murah lagi Ha, kalau dia, tapi dia mendapat benefit yang berkurangan lah Okay um, The same for less The same benefit sama Benefit sama Sama benefit dengan orang Sama benefit dengan syarikat-syarikat lain Tapi Harga yang dia perlu bayar adalah Lebih rendah Okay, kita ambil gula Gula kat mana-mana pun sama sebenarnya Harga dia kan Bawa pergi dekat kedai 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 runcit ke Kedai mana-mana ke sama Tapi when, it, when there's discount Harga dia akan jatuh Dia akan lebih murah Okay the same for less The same for less Kita dah uh, Same benefit sama je dekat mana-mana oh, Sorry Buat saya bukan cakap harga sama Dekat mana-mana pun sama je benefit dia Dia masih gula juga Tapi awak boleh bayar dengan harga yang murah Apabila ada discount Okay, online store pun kadang-kadang buat benda yang sama Benefit yang sama, cuma harga dia lebih murah Dia saya kata winning strategy Winning strategy, more for less So, when you, the customer get more benefit But they are able to pay less So, for example, IKEA, okay They are trying to use this strategy Because they want to win the, the market Because they know that more um, all the all the customers, we are we are looking for product which is um, which is we can get more benefits, but we want to pay less. Okay, so that is the winning proposition. So it's not easy to get that. Okay, tapi these are the companies that are using. More for more, more for the same, more for less The same for less, less for much less Okay, kalau saya sum up balik Apa guna yang mana? Apa guna? More for more More benefit, more lah kena bayar Ryanair, Jet Air, low cost airlines Dia guna yang mana? Less for much less Di mana kita sebagai pengguna Kita dapat kurang Benefit yang berkurangan Benefit yang kurang daripada orang lain Dan harga lebih murah Tak ada masalah lah Because at, at least we pay less Okay uh, The same for less Benefit sama Kedai mana-mana pun semua sama je Okay Tapi You are able to pay less For a product Kalau untuk more for the same Okay, itu saya kata Toyota, Lexus line Okay, dia keluarkan Lexus line sebab dia nak bagi dia sama par dengan kereta-kereta mahal di luar sana Okay Masih lagi uh, more benefits However, you still pay for the same price So, itu kita nak Okay, at the winning price Kita ada IKEA Di mana um, More for less Okay, you get more benefit But you are able to pay 
less amount of uh, less amount of price. Okay, I just want to see. Okay, so this is the positioning statement that can be used by the organization. Summarize what what is your company brand positioning using this form. Okay, two, what is your target market? Sorry, who is your target segment and need? What is your brand? What is your concept at that point of difference? How can we kind you and your competitor? Whether it is based on the product, whether it is based on your image, or whether it is based on your channel or based on your people. Okay, so you need to have positioning statement. So dalam positioning and dua benda yang penting lah. Dari proposition as well as positioning statement. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. So I hope that if you have any inquiry, please let me know. Uh, I'm sorry if I am too fast. Um, because this is actually online learning, and I believe that if there is any part that you think which is too fast, you can just you can just um pause. And take some time to digest whatever that I try to convey to you. And I would like you to remember that this uh, chapter is one of the most important chapters that you need to remember. You need to understand because this marketing strategy is focused on the consumer. So when you focus on the consumer, it helps you to uh, it helps you to develop your own marketing strategy because when you understand which one of the segmentation that you want to choose for the target market and you know why you are different as compared to the others and then you know where do you want to position your product at the, at the mind of the customer by using the positioning map by eh, sorry by using the value proposition by using the uh, positioning statement okay this will help you to be successful in the market thank you very much and see you next time all the best